Hey, what's up? It is Dan or DMAD96 here, and welcome back to our F1 Manager career mode with Stuart GP. And in the last episode of Austria, we didn't have the best of results. Uh, we got our first double DNF. Hopefully, this won't happen again. Uh, and we move on to round 10. We've got only seven rounds to go now. And this one is the German Grand Prix at Hockenheim. Obviously, the old Hockenheim circuit, so it's. Uh, more or less the uh, fastest track on the F1 calendar. Very little corners, um, apart from this little complex over here. And all just uh, high speed chicanes, really. A uh, very fast track. Also, I believe, um, one of the longest tracks on the calendar as well. Even about the same length as Belgium, which is quite a surprise. So, it should be an interesting one. So, obviously, straight line speed will be key here. So, I don't think we're going to be even close to winning this race unless there's retirements but a podium mo uh, could more or less be possible if we, if we keep the car on the track just take a quick recap in the drivers championship standings now it's looking very close for third that with both of us not scoring David Coulthard, Eddie Irvine and Giancarlo Fisichella are really catching up to Johnny Herbert I don't think he can hold on to third much longer and Hacken and Schumacher pulling away from rest of the field 25 points is the gap between both of them and it's looking like it's going to be uh, Hakkinen taking the Drivers' Championship unless something happens, really, uh, towards the end of the season. And we still have six drivers that are yet to score. No really big names there. And the Constructors' Championship, it's, uh, again, similar to the Drivers' Championship. We are losing points to Jordan. Uh, Benetton also catching up slightly as well. We need to try and beat them at least. If we don't beat Jordan, I would be happy if we beat Benetton and Williams, which I think we could easily. At the top is still McLaren and Ferrari dominating as usual. McLaren miles ahead of everyone else. Um, then we have Prost, B.A. and Sauber on a few points. Arizona and Minardi own teams yet to score. And we're still leading that by quite a long way. So we have a German Grand Prix coming up next. Should be a good one. Uh, hopefully, um, there should be some overtaking, I think. Uh, be an, I think it'll be an exciting race. Hopefully we can get some points like we didn't do in the previous three rounds. Well, I'd love to get some points and hope, hopefully we can beat Jordan and Benetton this weekend. But before we actually get on to the practice session, it's time to see what will be confirmed for the 2000 season in the news report. Not to report in the news this week, with only one team making an announcement. That being BAR and the signing of Alessandro Zanardi from Williams as the driver number two replacing Riccardo Zonta who will be driving for Sauber in the 2000 season. This makes it an all-Italian lineup for BAR next season, with Zanardi set to partner Benetton driver Giancarlo Fisichella. Time to go down to the Hockenheim ring for a practice session for this weekend's German Grand Prix. OK, so practice is finished, and I'm happy with where we are. Back where we should be. Because in the last few episodes, we were down here, like the uh, 10th and 11th place positions. This time, we're, we're right behind Jordan. Uh, the next qualifying as well, we have uh, fitted our better engines in now, so we'll be using them in qualifying. I had to, uh, unfortunately, Johnny Herbert is using the higher uh, model of front wing, and didn't mean to actually put them on the car, did it by mistake, and we didn't, and we only have one of them left. So Barry Keller's going to use the uh, third models. Uh, Mick Hakkinen again fastest in practice. Michael Schumacher, David Coulthard. And not Eddie Irvine fourth. Heinz Al Frenson actually in fourth. He set a last minute lap time to go fourth fastest. Hopefully, with our model of engines, uh, we can actually go faster than these guys. Um, we could start quite highly, but it all depends really what happens in qualifying. So, without further ado, let's go straight into the qualifying report. Aras and Minardi line up once again on the back two rows of the grid. Pedro Diniz lines up just ahead of both of the teams, with teammate John Lacey in 14th, and the two cross ahead of the Brazilian in 16th and 17th. A decent session for Jack Verneuf sees him start 12th, and Carla Fisichella lines up 9th alongside Alex Zanardi, who is the highest placed Williams driver. Jordan lock out row 4 with Heinz Alfredson on top, whilst the Stewart team seemed to be back on form in qualifying, with both cars making the top 6. It was a slightly disappointing session for Michael Schumacher at his home race, being out qualified by teammate Eddie Irvine. Whilst his championship rival from Bigger Hacken and makes it onto pole position once again for this weekend's German Grand Prix. Okay, so qualifying's just finished here for the German Grand Prix. It's a one stop strategy for both drivers, and I am very happy with that result. Fifth and sixth. Points could be possible here. We could finally get some points back on the board. Ahead of the Jordans and the Bentons and the Williams drivers. Alex Verts way down there in 13th, but Mick Hacken on pole position. Ed Eddie Irvine on the front row. Big surprise there. And Michael Schumacher, David Coulthard, solely following behind. And then, apart from that, it's a 
typical qualifying session really for Jordans. Williams then Prost, Sal Minardi, Arrows all the way down there. Arrows were off a pace. <laughs> to look, uh, if you look at Takaki's lap time, two minutes and two seconds. About nearly uh, 20 seconds off her uh, Hacken's time. But anyway, that's uh, the qualifying result. It should be an exciting race. Now let's go straight into it. Should be a very exciting one. On board with Rubens Barrichello. And we're underway here at Hockenheim. Barrichello, well, I thought he was going to get overtaken by that Williams there, but no, he doesn't. And he's actually uh, lost a position to um, one of the Jordans. And Johnny Herbert has already just got past David Coulthard. A brilliant start for him, but he's running side by side with the McLaren driver. We're going to go straight on board to him. You can see Coulthard going straight down the inside. He has gone through. No, Herbert gets back the inside line. Johnny Herbert moving into fourth position. It's not going to last long, I don't think. You can see Barrichello battling with one of the Jordans and Herbert trying to challenge Eddie Irvine. He's lost the position to his teammate, Michael Schumacher, now open to second. But Johnny Herbert has passed Damon, uh, David Coulthard even on the track to take fourth position. You can see Barrichello defending from the Jordan of, I think it's Heinz Halfrenson. Yes, it is Heinz Halfrenson. And well, uh, look at this, he's slowly keeping up to Eddie Irvine. And Barrichello, I'm pretty sure, is trying to have a go at David Coulthard here. Coulthard dropping back from the start. Herbert on a charge in fourth position. Can he hold on to it? Can we get a brilliant result here for Stewart? Meanwhile, it is Mika Hakkinen out in front still in the McLaren, leading Michael Schumacher. Michael Schumacher didn't actually start second, but yeah, he's managed to pass his teammate. But it is Mika Hakkinen who leads his championship rival as we finish the first lap here for German Grand Prix. And straight away, Hackett retired from the lead. It's a Ferrari 1 2. What happened with Hackett? Straight after the first lap, he must have done what Damon Hill did in the 1995 race here and crash out at the end of the first lap at turn one. Lap one completed. Hill, Schumacher, Coulthard. And off goes Damon Hill out of the race. And Michael Schumacher takes the lead. So we're now third on lap three. <laughs> Insane. Uh, and you can see uh, it is very close. We've got Barry Kelly closing in on David Coulthard as well. We're two seconds off the pace of Eddie Irvine. And I think the only way we're going to pass either Ferrari driver is if they retire from the Grand Prix. But David Coulthard is right behind Johnny Herbert. And it's not looking good, I think. I don't think we're going to get third position. We'll be bloody lucky if we do. Yep, Coulthard's just passed us, and Barrichello's also passed Johnny Herbert. We are thinking about putting it down to hold position soon because McLaren's going to pull away. But we are going to keep it on push for a couple of laps longer. We aren't pitting until uh, lap 23 and 22. So we're going to stay like this for the time being as David Coulthard just moves into third. Oh no, Johnny Herbert's gone. That's not good. Drive error. We are actually going to hold position because uh, we are uh, way ahead of France, and, and it would be good if we just kept it on track. The driver's slowly starting to fall off here. You've got Pedro Diniz and Damon Hill both out of the race now. On lap 14 of the Grand Prix. I also forgot to mention out of all of this, um, David Coulthard is absolutely on a charge here. He's just taken the lead of the German Grand Prix. And in that Mercedes power car where it is overpowered uh, on, in a straight line, he is pulling away from the Ferrari drivers. And surely Coulthard's got to be the favourite to win this Grand Prix. And we're on board with Barrichello. He is entering the pits on lap 22. Hopefully for a decent pit stop here. We're going to keep it on this camera. Pit crew out in the pit lane. We can just see them now. And here we go. Come on. Good stop, guys. A good stop would be nice. If you want any chance of taking a podium finish, we've got to have a good pit stop and hope that Ferrari absolutely bottle it. 11 seconds. Not terrible. Uh, still in f we're still dropped down to fifth, but I'm pretty certain Frenson needs to pit. Yes, he does. No, we're only 20 seconds off Schumacher. I don't think we're going to catch him up, though. We're just going to stay in hold position for the rest of the race. We're just going to bring the car home in what will be a decent fourth place finish and three points in the bag if, if Barry Keller can keep the car on track, which I'm hoping that he can because he's been very unlucky with retirements this season. We haven't scored points since uh, Canada. David Coulthard, absolute charging still, 20 seconds ahead of Eddie Irvine. It's not going to be enough. It's not going to be enough for Ferrari. Coulthard, I think, has won this race. And I've just noticed Eddie Irvine's out, isn't he? Yes, he is! Eddie Irvine's out of the race with a suspension failure. David Coulthard has surely won it now. We're into third position. What 
A redemption that was, especially for Herbert retiring. That is redemption and Barrichello is on the podium. We are just waiting now for David Coulthard to cross the line. So here we are on board with David Coulthard. He has been very unlucky all season long. Since that win in Australia, he has had a massive run of DNFs. He ended it in Austria by finishing in second place. And now it looks certain now David Coulthard's going to take a brilliant victory here, starting fourth place in Hockenheim. His teammate retired early on, then Eddie Irvine retired, but that wasn't going to play much of a factor as David Coulthard is going to cross the line and win here in Germany, his second victory of the season. A brilliant drive for the Scots, and it's going to be Michael Schumacher coming home in second place. Meanwhile, we are on board with, our, with ourselves, Rubens Barrichello, who is just going to start his final lap and hopefully will come home to take a brilliant fair place finish into the final few corners now for Rubens Barrichello. Just needs to keep the car on the track. That is Heinz Al Frenson behind and he isn't far behind at all. So it's going to be a close fight for third but I think Barrichello is going to do it. He has got a big enough gap to the Jordan driver and it's going to be a magnificent third for Barrichello. His third podium of the season and the team's first podium since the Spanish Grand Prix as well. A good return to form for uh, ourselves as well. We haven't scored points since the uh, Canadian Grand Prix. And here's Rubens Barrichello. Only two more corners to go. And Rubens Barrichello will round off the podium for an absolutely fascinating German Grand Prix. It's third place for Barrichello and a podium for Stewart. There's Heinz Alfredson coming across the line to take fourth for the Jordan team. And we've gained more points on Jordan and Benetton as well. Even though they got both cars into the points going team. Actually, no, they didn't get both cars into points because Versus retired only if he lets to go. That final point goes to the future BAR driver, Alessandro Zanardi. A very good race, a good return to form, and a brilliant third place finish from Barrichello. Shame about Johnny Herbert retiring so early on. He could have had a good showing today. He could have got some brilliant points. But yeah, brilliant return to form as well for David Coulthard collecting that victory. We take third behind Michael Schumacher. Hopefully this is a sign of things to come. Hopefully we can uh, continue our form and get some more points later on in the season. We've got some rounds that I think will favour us very soon as well, like Monza and uh, potentially Japan as well. But anyway, let's continue. Now looking at the Drivers' Championship, Schumacher once again is catching up. He's only 19 points behind Hakkinen, but I still don't think it's going to be enough. Even though Hakkinen didn't finish, Schumacher is still miles off the championship leader. David Coulthard has leaped from Johnny Herbert to third in standings thanks to his good form in the previous two rounds. Johnny Herbert failing to score points in the last four races now. Barrichello slowly redeeming himself, collecting his uh, third podium of the season now on 12 points, two behind Heinz Al Frenson, closing in on Eddie Irvine as well. He also didn't score points this weekend. Uh, Physical did score points, he's holding fifth in the championship. Frenson uh, in seventh, very close behind Eddie Irvine. And uh, no new point scores this weekend. Zanardi, uh, another driver who got a point as well. He's on three points right now. Apart from that, nothing else uh, really changing in uh, the championship so far. And then the Constructors Championship, McLaren have a 30 point lead over Ferrari and with six rounds to go, I think it's looking certain that McLaren could easily wrap up the championship. I think probably in Belgium or Monza. We, we still lie in third, five points ahead of Jordan. I think it's going to be, this is going to be the battle to watch, I think, between Jordan and Stewart. Who's going to take third in the Constructors' Championship? More importantly, Arminadi Arrow is going to score points for the season. And in the team manager's standings, uh, we still hold on to that uh, first position. And Ron Dennis still staying in second. John Titan in third, Alan Prost in fourth. Um, I don't recognise any of the changes, but I think, I'm pretty sure Eddie Jordan's managed to gain a few places. So has Rocco Benetton. Frank Williams still down in last. I don't know why really, he's not done terribly. He's slowly getting the season back together. So I hope you enjoyed that uh, fairly exciting German Grand Prix and a brilliant podium finish as well. And let's hope we can keep things going as we move on to the Hungarian Grand Prix next at the Hungaro Ring Circuit. I'm not so sure about this track if it's uh, good for us or good for me when I play this game like, in my spare time. But uh, it should be a good one. Hopefully we can get some more points. Uh, it'll probably be a back end of points, not a podium finish. We've got quite lucky to get that, to be honest. We did start quite highly. If we can get another good qualifying position, uh, we could actually get a good result, but I don't think uh, this track's going to suit our engines. 
as compared to the uh, German Grand Prix. But yeah, I um, hope you guys have enjoyed uh, this episode. If you have, please leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Until next time, guys, for Demon Knight 6, and I'll catch you guys later. You pull apart, start to fight, and I know there's something between us with nothing inside. Nothing at all. You pull apart, start to fight.